welcome to 44 and 1. <clears throat> Don't forget to like and subscribe. We haven't been saying that lately. We're the worst. True, true. Yeah, but it's also less annoying when we don't, I guess. True. <laughs> so would it mean that more people would end up liking and subscribing if we didn't say it because they appreciate our nice gesture of not annoying them? Or do you actually need to harass people? I don't know, because I apparently, apparently, the like internet guru marketing experts say you should call to action to like and subscribe. Hmm. But I personally, as soon as I hear like, oh okay, yeah, we're gonna give this video in a second, but first don't forget to like I'm out. Yeah, yeah so and that's the thing, it's like We are I, not our own target market. I don't think No, 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 no. <laughs> that annoys the fuck out of me. And the other thing is is like when they do like a a big sort of rigmarole before they actually get to the point of the video, that really winds me up. That um, is blogging in a nutshell. If you have hmm. ever tried to look at a recipe online, <laughs> It was a nice fall day, and my husband, and my kids, and I decided to go to the pumpkin patch in our matching outfits. Look at us yeah. in our buffalo plaid, and then we took a hayride, and then and then they were like, "I'm hungry," and we we're like, "We should recipe, bitch. That's all I want." I just wanted the. Re it's just baked oatmeal, Barbara. Just fuck off. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's annoying. Um, uh, it, it's kind of funny. You get that in research papers sometimes, where the person, the author writing it, really likes the look of their own words. And we'll just go into all this flowery language and over explanation. Like, you think I'm bad, right? I'm pretty chill for a researcher. <laughs> it's just, do they have a word count they have to? Yeah, yeah. But my they... sister, my sister, before convincing me to get on TikTok, has always been trying to convince me to do some, have some sort of online presence, usually around like my weight loss and like lifestyle stuff. And then I'm not interested in it because I don't care for lifestyle blogs. I don't, the, the mm. stuff. blah, blah, blah. Anywho. So I thought, okay, I would try doing like a cooking blog where I would take a recipe and then test it out and then give my review of the recipe. But then I like the blog post was I'm making this recipe. Here's pictures of the process. Here's what I thought of the recipe. And then my sister was like, no, <laughs> that's not, why did you choose it? And I was like, cause I was hungry and wanted soup. Like there's no, there's no grand gone with the wind story no. into me picking firecracker beef for dinner tonight i wanted something spicy and so Asian i made it spice. i don't care if it's out of season i want it i want it in my mouth you know what's fun is that i keep hearing like to save money you should buy things seasonally but mm. it's the price of groceries is at a level where it doesn't yeah. matter if it's in or out of season it's yeah. all just gouging it's ridiculous yeah. it's all ridiculously expensive and it has been for a few years and it's just gotten shit. worse so fast. Like I mm. watched the price of eggs in the span of two months go from a dollar eighty eight to three seventy nine. Every week I would go buy eggs and they would be more and more expensive. At the, what, I was just like, I'm just gonna buy a hen. Yeah, yeah. It'd be cheaper. It'd be cheaper. It, it's fucking ridiculous. Um like so in the UK, right, I find that these companies they game the laws very well. They're very good at it. Uh, and I'm not blaming them because they they operate within a system and it's natural for people to push the boundaries of the system. But we've got such a weak world government that won't do anything about it. So we have anti-monopoly laws. But then all the corporations, we also have insider trading laws. But the corporations are so good at getting around all of that that they have they, they, they talk and they share ideas. And then they all like it's, it's like a pseudo uh it's like pseudo uh fair trade and it's like it's pseudo competition because there's no real competition and that's the problem that we have here is that mm. like there's there's grocery monsters yeah who just like buy up all these other stores keep their branding so you think mm. you may be shop like you think you may be out from under their thumb but mm. you're still shopping in their store so like there's no competition other than they're competing against themselves and you're always having, you're always putting money in the same pocket, regardless of where you're going to shop. Unless yeah. you go like, there's one store chain that is kind of the the least worst in those, but they, they are so over the moon overpriced. It's ridiculous. Like on an average, they've always been just like that premium store, even though they don't have premium products, they have <laughs> premium pricing. So yeah. you have like no options unless you want to drive quite a distance to find mm. some like small local. Oh, the, the running joke here is that the uh, upper middle class people uh, shop at Waitrose because it's all the same shit. It's just double the price. <laughs> I bet it makes them feel superior. It's kind of the same. Like it's 
it's shocking because we have like different levels of grocery stores. There's like the mm. bottom of the barrel, not the bottom of the barrel, but like the lower end grocery store that mm. you may get some pretty chanky looking produce. <laughs> And they don't, the selection isn't there. And then there's like the one step up from them, the one step up from them, and then like the mm. premium stores. But they're all owned by the same people. It's like mm. the whole Gap, Banana Republic, Old Navy thing. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, like Asda here, people don't, like it says it quite blatantly, but people still don't realize it's owned by fucking Walmart. So like you've got people here in the UK complaining about various policies of Walmart in the United States. I don't know why they're talking about it, but they are. And then they go and fucking shop in Asda. <laughs> okay, you're just funding them. Fine. I don't know. I have known a lot of like people who were anti Walmart because when they first came in, they were t- mm. like the Walmart where I grew up took over another department store. So it's not like they were knocking small businesses out because it wasn't an area that had a ton of small businesses. But like I get where it is impacting those small mom and pop shops. Mm. Some people will still stay committed to them. But it's also like Walmart is massive. They employ a massive amount of people. So it's yeah. kind of like this weird. I, I think it's what what I what to me the problem is, is that uh, governments don't keep up with regulation and legislation. And then, so they they don't protect us from the corporate monstrosities, which is their job to do that. Like they're supposed to make sure that like the roads are repaired, the utilities work, and that we're not fucked over. <laughs> then you find out that like they're the same people who are fucking us over are giving them huge political mm-hmm. contributions. Like my town, the sidewalks here are awful. Awful. Like they are constantly cracked. After a rain, you can't even walk on the sidewalk because like I bought like galoshes, right? Like rain boots. <laughs> And it was the and as I was walking through, there were times where walking on the sidewalk, my foot was covered in water up to my ankle. What? Like they are just terrible. And like the sewer drains are always covered. Like one day, it's gonna be such a Karen thing that I did. One day on my walk, I took a picture of every storm drain hmm. and sent it to the town to be like, it's your job to keep these clear. So water drains and they are all covered in leaves. You can't even see them anymore. And it happens every single year. They don't take care of it. So when I there's one corner where I saw, like, I tripped on the crack in the in the sidewalk. I saw other people trip on the crack of the sidewalk. And so I called the town to complain about it. And they came by and they just spray painted it orange. And that's, like, their sign to eventually come back and do something about it. But yeah, it's been two four years. years and they've yeah. never got back. Idiot. I mean, yes, thank you. The orange makes it easier to see. Like, I might start carrying around mm. my own orange spray paint again. <laughs> but that's not, like, we need to get to this thing about this definition of the Karen. Because a Karen overly aggressively and overly assertively and overly zealously dies on a hill that is pointless over nothing like actually a concern where your local government is not doing the one job that you pay your tax for (laughs) that is not being a karen (laughs) okay fine thank you because anytime i feel anytime i complain about anything somebody calls me a karen and then like one guy when i didn't complain about something he called me a karen (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah we almost need like to take everyone back to school and then tell them what everything means like do it all over again because everything's just really getting out of hand i want to hit the reset button but i can't find it it's the sun it has to supernova yeah 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 (laughs) well there was a guy today i saw in someone else's video he had so he was a canadian Mm -hmm. and he was making a video kind of like shit talking trump which i mean that's low-hanging fruit we should get past that now we're better than that canada our comedic funny bone is better than that Anyway. You got Trudeau. You got, you got your own guy. You know what? He's say what you will. He's he's not the worst option we've had. True. So, someone said like, "Oh, it's clear you were educated in Canada," and it's like that's coming from an American who they can't even find their own state on maps half the, half yeah, the time. Yeah. And you're gonna shit talk the Canadians. That's okay. It's like I tell me about the War of eighteen twelve. That's right. Yeah, see how that went for you. <laughs> <laughs> they think they won. They are taught that they won. What? We trashed them. It was um, you guys, us, and the Iroquois. That's what I remember. Yes. But do you want to say... For what I remember, you were there. Yeah, yeah, for what I remember, I remember it happening. I was, I was there on the front line. My musket. <laughs> no, um, the funny thing is that with the Americans, the crew went, we're not taught any of this at school. We were not taught about the War of Independence or anything. And um, I've seen this a few times on TikTok already, but like... People, are su- Americans are surprised when they don't realize that we don't know anything about the War of Independence. And then we're like, 
do you not realize that that was a minor conflict for us? Like we we were fighting a war against fucking Napoleon and all these other things around, but like right in between all of these other wars. It's amazing. They, they uh, this is I don't want to go down the road of like America trashing, but there is that that creator who is now living abroad and she had this like whole chain of videos now on like things Americans have said. And like so many examples were Americans traveling on July 4th, shocked that other mm. countries weren't celebrating July 4th because they thought mm. it was such a big deal for Americans that it had to be such a big deal everywhere. And then uh, my first experience with how careful they are about like, it's so kind of like polar opposites sometimes they're so paradoxical and i just want to get this out straight away that like we're not talking in general about americans we're talking about just like certain types of americans we're not stereotyping your whole like country of people uh, we're just talking about the, t the the types of people in any society that will engage in these behaviors anyway you know who they are yeah yeah we all fucking know who these people are <laughs> So when I was at um, this, this university and I made friends with quite a few Americans and they they wanted to celebrate July the 4th, but they're all like masters and PhD students, but they were scared to celebrate it because they didn't want to upset the other nationalities in the, uh, in the college. But it was interesting because then they did get backlash because they wanted to celebrate it from some of the other nationalities. So they were paranoid about it, and then their paranoia was proven true. <laughs> it was so weird. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I, I remember, like, they wanted to celebrate uh, Cinco de Mayo as well. Um, but then they were worried about that because of, like, people, because of, like, they said, so one of them said something about, like, the Hispanic Empire or something, and they were worried well, they would upset people. And Cinco de Mayo has been a bit contentious because it is, hmm. it's a very specific holiday for... A very specific culture so people have mm. now turned to it being an appropriation of that culture but there, there's this, this one last she was saying like she's like but i'm from new mexico we celebrate it there why can't i celebrate it we've been doing it my whole life <laughs> just not everything is about you yeah. <laughs> if i yeah. want to celebrate july 4th it doesn't take yeah. away anything away from you it doesn't impact you exactly. it's not about you it's not for you or just mm. let, let, let people have their things Man, the conversations I had to go through, right? So we, there should be like a weekly pub quiz in the college. And me and my mate, we did like a, um, uh, like it was on St. David's Day. So we, and then he was from Alaska. So we did like a funny pub quiz where we had questions about Alaska and questions about Wales in it, uh, just to combine the two cultures. But then in, our, in the music round, which is usually pop music and all that stuff, we played different national anthems. And then you had to name which country it was. Yeah. No way. <laughs> we did it. Uh, and the only reason I know mine is because I had to sing it every day in school. And I only <laughs> like I only know it in half French, half English, because that's how it was taught. That's well, how I'm... we sing it. And I know the American one only, be not all the words. I could recognize it if I heard it only because my husband watches sports. <laughs> <laughs> I just play it every single thing. No, um, I know the Welsh one because of patriotic fervor. And also it's the best <laughs> national anthem. The best national anthem ever. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, and nothing else compares to it. But anyway. Uh, all right. Uh, I do know, I think it's Colombia or Venezuela. Mm. One of the two. I think they have a six minute. It's They have the record for the longest national oh, anthem. It's almost six minutes long. Br Britain might be close uh, with God Save the Queens. There's like 12 verses or something. Yeah. There's a six minutes and there's another country. Oh, Kick ass. Uh, I'm going to Google it quick. <laughs> but um, uh, anyway, the amount of conversations that I had to have with people, the amount of diplomacy involved to get them to let me play the Chinese national anthem in the round. Why? Yeah, because they didn't want to upset, like, um, the other students. Um, so, like, You're, the non-Chinese okay students. It's okay to be upset. It's, we have to yeah. stop being afraid to upset people. It's okay to be upset. You have to learn how to handle upset. It's like when my niece was dancing, right? Like, she was... Irish dancing and she was always winning or placing she didn't learn how to lose you have to learn how to be uncomfortable you have to yeah. learn how to be angry you have to learn how to process those emotions constantly trying to figure out a way to not be upset or distressed is going to do you zero favors as you get on in your years because life does come with upsets and you can't always be hiding from that the life end. fucks you life fucks you and this is the thing like what what I think was going on here is that um, academics tend to be liberal, like not many of them are conservative. 
And plus these were uh, postgraduate students. So they're ultra analytical and overthink everything. Uh -huh. So they're taking like, so all of this craziness in society and then they're kind of like making it worse by overthinking it and being paranoid about it. I get wanting to have safe spaces, but the entire universe is not your safe space. Sometimes nah. you have to be it's, uncomfortable. It's That's how other, you grow. It's not other people's responsibility. And like, I think that like when you're talking about like trigger warnings and safe spaces, so it would be, for example, a suitable trigger warning would be, OK, we need to do like uh, an ethics lecture. So we're going to be talking about some very difficult topics. Uh, so be warned that if you've had past traumas, some of that might come up. So we're going to talk yes. about maybe like rape or sexual abuse or something. Um, so you have to warn people. But then to say that like there's like violence in a fucking Shakespeare play is ridiculous. Warning or you people need a trigger about warning because you're asking for advice on making a purchase. Yeah, yeah. Or that little house on the prairie getting a trigger warning for outdated cultural depictions. Yeah. Or out <laughs> yeah. Here's the problem I have. I think people have forgotten. How, it's like, like with the dawn of social media and everyone having a camera, the art of storytelling has disappeared, right? Because mm -hmm. instead of people being like, oh, this is what happened to me today. They're like, look at the video I took, right? Mm -hmm. We've lost that art of storytelling. But we are also losing the art of debate and critical thought and yeah. argument. Because if you are not willing to listen to anybody who has an opposing view or an opposing opinion, you're not going to be testing your own opinions to ensure that they are still as hard and fast as you thought they were, but also you're never going to be able to develop the skills to argue toward that side of things. You're never going to yeah. be able to want to sway someone to your way of thinking or learn how to debate and break things down because you just shut it out. It, yeah. It's uncomfortable for me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it, but then you're never going to get to a point where you could say, Oh yes, that has solidified, solidified my beliefs, or that's an interesting way of thinking about it. I'm going to change and maybe evaluate my thought process yeah and it's i think my my opinion is is that it's always been like this but social media and the modern mainstream media combined and making it look like it's new and everybody's like it but our world used to be much smaller and we didn't know all of these things about people like but it's also i mean i think it was always there but it and wasn't like social media is amplifying the effect it is and it's not as prevalent and people don't like I would have encountered that much less frequently than mm. I do now, right? It's like when we saw that video of in a university lecture, people just getting up and leaving. It's like, <laughs> if it challenges your beliefs and it makes you uncomfortable, ask yourself why that is, right? Are your mm. beliefs that flimsy? Are they that steadfast? And if they are, then talk to me about that. Try to mm. get me to your way of thinking. Like it's, it's, um, and also the, the lecturers, I mean, not in that video, because uh, she's a, Heather Haynes, a fantastic lecturer, but there are lecturers out there now who want, and there's too many of them, they want to coddle and protect and put a wall around their students so they don't get harmed and they want to protect them. But they're also turning them into fucking activists. Like, it's so rare now. Like, one of my favourite lecturers I had on my undergrad, he said, like, I don't care if your opinion doesn't agree with me. He's like, I just want you to be able to argue your point. And if exactly. you argue your point well, you'll get the marks. <clears throat> Write about whatever you want. And that's the thing. No one knows how to argue anymore, right? Mm. They they yell things that often aren't, aren't applicable, throw hissy fits, and then storm out of the room. And it's, mm. well, let's have a conversation. Let's, yeah. Gozer agrees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the thing is, it's, and like... it's like, it's like there's a difference, like when you were a kid, right? And your parents try to teach you a lesson. I mean, that mm. was the wrong way to go about it, right? Because teaching a kid that smoking is bad isn't, here. here's a carton of cigarettes, smoke it, right? So there's that <laughs> side of things. <laughs> But also, like, just making sure that they're never, ever in an environment where they've seen somebody smoke is also not the right thing, right? There's that mm. balance of what's appropriate and how do you safely make people feel uncomfortable. And university should be the place for that, where you're yeah. in a safe space, where you're intended to learn and grow in that environment. So question, mm. question things, learn how to debate, mm. learn how to argue. And that's what safe space was supposed to mean. Like, it was supposed to be a, a place where you're free to express and you're free to test and then you're not going to have like lasting harm because of it. <laughs> um, apparently the longest one in terms of stanzas is the Greek one, but I guess in the way it's delivery is probably quicker than the Colombian one. The Colombian one was the six minute running time. That's what it went yeah, by. That's yeah, what, what, yeah. yeah, that's what it went by. That's it, babies. Just shut the fuck up now, please. Yeah. So the Greek one has 158 stanzas. 
to sing that in less than six in like in under six minutes you gotta be saying that pretty quickly Mm. I, I'm wondering if that, like, because like, God save the Queen. People don't realize how long it. Or God save the King. Now, <laughs> um, they don't. People don't realize how long it is, uh, because we only do like a couple of verses or whatever in the at sports events and stuff. But it's it's like a whole bunch of stanzas long. Okay. There's like, but there's some really problematic ones. That's all about how great the Empire is and how we're going to smash all our enemies and make them eat our <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> Canada one they've changed recently uh, to take out sons there was the word sons was in it so that's been removed and they changed in all our sons command to in all of us command <laughs> it's a very short i didn't realize how short that anthem is it's two four six eight nine lines is that it that's it oh canada our home and native land true patriot love and all of us command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free far and wide oh canada we stand on guard for thee God keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the uh, some of the Welsh one. Are you ready? Yes. Mine head lad and fan had I in an oily me, glad beer that cantorion in wogion oi three. I gwal refel we, glad gar we tramad, tros rithid gothlasant I gwide, glad, glad, plied your loi fin, glad. From more in fear, it be a hof by, I be there, ye hen, ye eith bar high. Did you just summon a demon? Yes. Um, I <laughs> think I've never said it normally, but that's the first time I've only ever said it. No, me too. It. it felt really weird. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard. Um, it's really hard to actually say it because um, I kept wanting to like go into the rhythm of singing it. But it's, um, O land of my fathers, O land of my love, dear mother of minstrels who kindle and move. And hero on hero who honours proud call for freedom, their lifeblood let fall. Country, country, oh, but my heart is with you. As long as the sea, your bulwark shall be, to Cymru, my heart shall be true. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and then the second verse is, oh, land of the mountains, the bard's paradise, whose precipice valleys are fair to my eyes. Green murmuring forest, far echoing flood, fire the fancy and quicken the blood. Yes. Does it rhyme in Welsh? Because it rhymes in English, and I wouldn't have expected that to be the case. Uh, yeah, no, this is, uh, it's like a translation that a guy made, so I think it's like uh, the, yeah, yeah. Took some liberties? Yeah, and then, like, there's different translations through the years. I don't know the Portuguese one. Ah, it's shit language anyway. It's not Welsh. I'm joking, I'm sorry, don't hurt me. Fuck yourself. <laughs> the, the two, Actually, yeah. let me say it in Portuguese. Vat <laughs> Uh, the only thing I can say insulting in Welsh is at the English. So, took din pub I can swear up a storm in Portuguese. Ah, that's the only thing I know in Welsh, uh, which is every asshole is an Englishman. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. And they get really angry when they know what it is, and then you say it to them, and then they get angry about it. And I think there was a guy who put it onto a pub sign because he was hired to do it at some Welsh pub. But I think it was an English guy right now. I forget the story, but he put up there Tuchtin Pub Saisi, and then nobody knew it. And it was there for years. <laughs> and then a Welshman noticed it. It was like, hey, I know that, man. <laughs> so there's all these Englishmen in London. The secret rebellion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then um, there's another famous thing where um, they, they needed to get some road signs made. And it was like um, people, it was like English people doing it who didn't speak a lick of Welsh and didn't bother to check it. So they uh, emailed this bloke to get a translation from turning this sign from English to Welsh. And then they got an email back. So they're like, okay, let's run with it. And they put it up on the sign. And <laughs> on this sign, it's legendary. It was this out of office message. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> People are like, oh, only a third of Welsh people can speak Welsh fluently. And like, yeah, do you not realise our language is nearly made extinct that one school in the mountains were able to keep teaching their kids Welsh. And that is the only reason why the language survived. That's amazing. Good for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, because basically there, there was like this thing where if um, the kids in the class, like not at this school, is it, you know, like all the English run schools and stuff um, would be that if the kids were heard talking Welsh, they had to basically put like a, a board around their neck, like, you know, like with the sandwich boards and to say that they'd basically broken the rules and they spoke Welsh. And then the next kid to speak Welsh 
then takes the board. And then the kid left with the board at the end of the day in the class gets beaten. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. People have no fucking clue. Like, when they're talking about... Um, this is one of the frustration, personal frustrations I have with TikTok, where people see that I'm a white person. They talk to me about white privilege and all this stuff. I'm like, do you not realize that even in my lifetime, the way Welsh people have been treated by English people? Like, I I was bullied horrifically at the start of school when I started my accent. And, like, you know, kids, like, trying to start fights with me, trying to, like, like taunt me all the time, calling me a sheep shagger and a pig fucker and stuff. And People forget just teachers. how cruel people can be to even teachers. It's fucking mm. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I had a history teacher that said, all right, Taffy boy, oh, fucked any sheep today. I was fucking 12. Yeah, and I had another teacher say that, like, um, I mean, it, like, I had brought up problems with this teacher. But part of it, I think, is, like, A, that I was Welsh, and B, that he just didn't like me. And he was calling out the register when I was about 15 at this point. And then he basically segregated me from the whole class, so I had to sit right in front of him. And there's no other kids around me. And then he's calling out the register, and he just, like, kind of went forward. He was like, I'm not going to call your name out. You're not worth it. And then just <gasps> carried on calling everyone else's name out. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with the Indigenous people, they... um. The Indian Act gave the government, at the behest of the Catholic Church, permission to remove Indigenous children from their homes and put them into these residential schools. But the schools were, like, the kids were beaten. They weren't allowed to speak their own language. They had to learn Catholic religion. They were sexually abused. They lived in, like, horrible conditions. There was hardly any food. They didn't have any heating. They, didn't, they weren't allowed to just do anything. And uh, they were just kind of like stripped of everything that they weren't even left to wear their own clothes. Like when they showed up to mm. school, they were taken, their clothes were taken away. They were given these uniforms. It was just. Well, that's where the orange shirt thing comes from, doesn't it? Orange shirt day. Yeah. That woman who on her, like she was six years old and on her first mm. day, they took it away and they never, she never got her shirt back. So when she was able to, she got her shirt and was like, this is. Mm. And how old is this woman now? Uh, Cause she's still around, isn't she? Yeah, I think she's in her fifties or sixties, maybe, because the so, last school didn't shut down till like nineteen ninety six. So this is this is what I think is one of the most shocking things. I think is that the stuff that happened to the I guess the Celtic and Gaelic people is that it happened to us quite a long time ago. Uh, Wales was conquered, I think, in twelve sixty six or twelve eighty six, something like that. Um, that's that's when they 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 conquered us, but. Mm -hmm. um, this stuff that was happening to the indigenous people, and then you kind of think like, oh, well, that must have been like the 17 or 1800s then. You think? <laughs> yeah. So like, that's it stuff sounds you like it should be, but no, no, 1996 was the last one that closed down. And it, that's quite interesting because it's like, it's around that time in the 90s when the Welsh culture got a resurgence and they, we started getting, like it became uh, compulsory to teach uh, Welsh in school. Uh, everybody had to learn it and all that stuff. So, you know, there's a big change. There's more of a celebration about the Ice Death Fod. Uh, so the Eisteddfod is like a, a yearly kind of festival where, um, like, all the little communities, they get together and they have, like, um, they celebrate, like, education and learning and, like, dance and theatre and singing and all that. And nice. then in my, yeah, I only got to experience one because I was at the convent school before that. And then the school before that, uh, even though it was a state school, um, we didn't celebrate the Eisteddfod for some reason. I don't think it was that compulsory then. So I only got to experience it once, and I won the handwriting competition. <laughs> oh, fancy pants. Yeah, because the nuns were crazy fascist about teaching you how to do good handwriting. <laughs> I, man, I used to have lovely penmanship, and now it's just... Yeah, yeah as quick as I can. It's just dots and squiggles. <laughs> so, I can't... Uh, if I take my time, it's nice, but, yeah, most of the time it's a bag of shit. But, yeah, like, I remember with the Irish, there was... I forget where it was, but there was one incident where... Um, the redcoats basically corralled the people, forced them into a lake. And then if anybody tried to swim to the shore of, of, of the lake, they'd get shot by musket fire. Yes. And um, they basically had to stay in the center of the lake and drown. Um, so if they tried to survive, they'd get shot. And if they stayed in the lake, they'd drown. I almost think like getting <laughs> shot would be the lesser of two evils because it'd be quicker than drowning. Yeah, but I mean, muskets, though, they're not exactly uh, the height of marksmanship. Fair. Probably get your left bollock shot off and he'll die a slow death. <laughs> There's a ton of books that I want you to read so we can talk about them on the podcast, but you're a lazy cunt. You're not reading any of them. So here's one. I'm going to give you the scenario. It's called Clara and the Sun. Mm. 
So it is in a in a world where uh, you can buy artificial friends for your kids. Mm. They're they're around like the. <laughs> That's staying in the podcast. That was the uh, Zool. Was that Zool? That was Zool. <laughs> She's trying to get my attention so I get retreats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could just imagine when it's time for dinner your husband coming up with a squeaky toy <laughs> come on bitch my boobs <laughs> <laughs> it's quite impressive that they make that sound That's really nice. <laughs> i keep a squeaker in my bra <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. clears throat> anywho yes the clara and the sun you can buy your kid and they're not cheap, but you can buy your kid these artificial friends. And Clara is one of the artificial friends. And she kind of like, she kind of starts developing, you think, some sentience. But we learn that Clara, or so the daughter, I forget what her name is, she's very ill. And they don't know if she's going to make it. So the mother has purchased Clara because she's really good at mimicry. So she's like, show me how my daughter walks and show me how she talks. Because she's trying to replace her daughter. In the event that her daughter dies, she will have Clara, who will take over as her daughter. Because this is the crux of the whole situation. They had a previous, another daughter who had done, goes her. Hey, fuck's sake. So I have, Jesus Christ, I have a stuffed boogie boogie on my bookshelf. Oh, he like, tries to fuck it, doesn't he? No, he relax. He's not trying <laughs> to fuck it. He wants to just destroy it. I don't know which is better. But I can see him staring at it and like making these little hops because he's trying to do the math as like how high do I have to jump to get this oogie boogie without knocking over the entire bookshelf? <laughs> I didn't have children for a reason and I have two fucking toddlers running around this house on that damn day. I'm telling you, cats. Cats are the answer. So <laughs> they had a daughter who had passed. Mm. And then we learn that the reason she had passed and the reason Clara is sick is because they have genetically engineered their children to be smarter and better and more well equipped but for a lot of kids it doesn't take they don't make it so they die young but if they survive it then they kind of like go on to this wonderful wonderful life later on uh the daughter's best friend is this young boy who they have decided they're going to be together forever. When they're old enough, they're going to get married. They're in love with each other. But his parents chose not to genetically engineer him. So mm. when Clara or the daughter gets better, she just drops him like a hot potato. This is a long way of asking you. <laughs> if, you <laughs> if you had the choice, and I know, I know what your answer is going to be, but I want the discussion. If you had the choice to like genetically superiorize your kids <gasps> mentally, physically whatever to give them more opportunities later on would you do it of course my name's mengala <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's one of those things that like if it existed i think it would have to be something that was available for everybody um that it should be like a species thing if we're gonna if we're gonna enhance things it's got to be the species that can do it the technology exists for everybody, but a lot of mm. parents choose not to do it because they don't want to risk losing their child to make them smarter. Mm. So they will kind of like, you're already, like, we'll get you tutors, we'll get you the yeah. education that you need, we'll work with that, but we don't want to mm. risk your life yeah. for this. I, I think it's like, again, like there's an academic and an emotional heart answer, heart-oriented answer, because like, I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't take the risk that I'd lose my kid because, like, you know. It's your kid. Yeah. Exactly. Why would you risk tampering with them? Um, and just, uh, I mean, if it was like genetic engineering for a different reason and it was going to save them, then that's a bit different, isn't it? It's completely different. But trying to uh, genetic engineer them with a high chance that they're going to die really young makes it utterly pointless. And like, I mean, there's a chance that they can make it, right? Like the daughter's, I forget what her name is, the daughter's older mm -hmm. sister didn't make it hmm. the daughter pushes through she gets through it i i think with it is it's again like there's so many interesting questions to be had in that i mean you could go on for hours really getting into depth on it but like with how i personally view life and what i value in life and what i see that we're all here for to do i wouldn't do it because um like that life is just too sacred to just like it you know the child's been born they've grown up and for to willfully do something like that to kill that kid 
like if you if it's like a 25 percent chance the kid's gonna die then i i wouldn't want to fuck with that <laughs> i can't remember if they go into like the the stats on it but <clears throat> a lot of kids get sick and then like poor clara because she's like her whole function was mm. to be the friend to this girl and then she's like mm. left in an attic looking at the sun because she's yeah. not needed anymore and like she's it is heartbreaking it was heartbreaking and then it was, even though she's artificial intelligence it was still heartbreaking yeah yeah um and the, the thing is is like you were saying that like she was made to be a replacement like if the 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 new one dies the the new daughter yeah. young daughter like if she dies as well then clara is going to replace that daughter for the mother it's like yeah so the like mother it. was like walk like her talk like her that is so fucking backward like why would you get like an artificial intelligence that doesn't have all of the life and vitality of a real person and have them replace your genetically enhanced like you can so like a normal human to here and then the fake human to here in terms of like humanness and then the superior humans are here so you're going to go from that to that when you could have just kept that yeah like it's a good way of looking at it the, the other questions would be interesting is like what kind of state would society have to be in in relation to what we view human life as in order to find this acceptable on a commercial level for it to be it for it to make enough money to for, the, for it to be an industry there's got to be a lot of people financing it and engaging with it in order for the industry to survive and they call it like so i'm just kind of taking a look at they call it um that the children are lifted the genetic engineering is lifting the mm. children so it is set in a dystopian future but they never say what year it's set in mm. or or anything else and the af so they call them artificial friends the af are solar powered which is why it's called clara and the sun because mm. she likes to mm. ask but like Clara would be in the store, right? Because they have to be purchased. So she would be in the store with like other AFs standing there in the window talking like and she'd be like, Oh, like there's that looks like a nice kid. Like I can go home with that kid. Where's that? <laughs> like she was wanting to get purchased and she was wanting and like she has a conversation with Josie the first time Josie comes in. Because I know I'm cheated, I saw her name. She has a conversation and then she's like, Oh, I hope like I hope Josie comes back for me. And then one day she's like, I can hear her at the front of the store, but she's looking for me and they move me to the back of the store. Like this is going through the head of an artificial intelligence. See, th th that is like these biological determinists that's where it could ultimately lead is that kind of horrific future like the this is one of the things i like about lex fridman like he's he's uh does a lot of research in uh robotics and ai and the question he's trying to answer is is how do you replicate the human soul but within a, a program and an artificial intelligence because there is something about being a human that everything so far has lacked and you can spot it like you can figure it out um like if, if people try and say yeah but there's like chat bots now that could come across as real people and it's like no i don't mean that i mean actually face to face in front of somebody like you know whether it's like a, a character on a screen or whatever in a computer game or like one of those weird japanese sex bots or something but you can tell it's not human it's in the eyes it's in the gesticulations the the virility so is it more physical if they don't have the same you know that that depth, well, that's the depth the of the eyes, or facial expressions, or is it also in how they communicate, or both? It's the that's yeah, the question. It's like how much is it, um, and where does it come from? There's like a oh, forgive me for saying French words, but there's a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can speak foreign. <laughs> but it would be interesting, like in the in the show robots, they were very like they would speak like humans they didn't have you know there's no depth of emotion but also like the little nuance of like a, like the weird shoulder shrug or the you know mm. 11s right they were just yeah. very neutral in their facial yeah. expressions you would have to program all those facial expressions and then the emotions mm. that go with that how do you teach somebody well the thing is is like i'd love to work with somebody like lex fridman he must be so interesting he thinks part of it is to do with your feelings of love towards somebody and like your feelings of love and compassion towards other human beings and that empathy. And that's something that at this point, a computer program can't replicate. It's so just- matter can some people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm actually wondering as well that like, uh, for example, there's certain um, psychological disorders and, and all that stuff that people have trouble um, bonding with people with those disorders. 
because I mean, for example, like people with autism, like with the empathy problem, like we have empathy, we just don't show it in our face. Um, as, and another thing about people with autism is that like they don't use all of the facial expressions that your face is capable of. It's just blank. And then it makes people think a certain way about them. Um, there's people when they have uh, uh, schizoaffective disorder as well, they can be quite blank and they're quite uh, subdued in, like monotone in their voice. Um, and all like the schizotype, schizoform disorders are like that. Um, and even people who emigrate to a foreign country, um, for like in the first couple of years, the culture shock can emulate psychological disorders because they they there's so many nuances that we don't understand, that we don't even realize about in terms of um, getting involved in a completely new foreign culture with a new language. There's those little things we pick up all through our lives that they don't have. So it makes them look like they have schizoaffective disorder and it, they, it completely replicates it. Yeah, obviously not everybody goes through this, but, you know. They, but but it, I mean, can... you have to learn, right? Like if you were to go from a country, like, you know, I mean, I know in Canada and a lot of places that's like, okay, but there are parts of the world where that is a highly offensive gesture. Okay, so the thumbs up in parts of the Arab world, the gesture is considered highly offensive, pointing with your ingus index finger. Mm -hmm. And depends which mm -hmm. hand sometimes in some cultures as well. Yeah. Like, yes. These are all like specifically about different cultures. The OK symbol is very insulting in Turkey and in some Middle Eastern countries such as Kuwait because it denotes the evil eye. Uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, the thumbs up one is that because they want to like it saying stick your thumb up your ass or something like that? Maybe it is the equivalent of the middle finger in the West. It doesn't say mm -hmm. if it's a thumb up your ass type of thing. Oh, okay. A <laughs> thumbs up in Russia and the OK sign is Bra in Brazil are also rude okay. and we still have yeah if you wanted to pump out a quick one i always love getting out a quick one <laughs> oi, oi, oi. okay i'm gonna give you four titles mm -hmm. for the cards you tell me which one you want to discuss the freewheeling architect the tumor you're the boss. Mystical Clay. You're the boss. I've not read any of these. You're the boss? I make the tough decisions. Why is it, okay, why is it in all these TV shows and books, whenever somebody says, I make the tough decisions, it always means that they're a dickhead and their decisions are going to harm people. Why is it never the hard decision is the compassionate one? That's an excellent question. Also, because in uh, to add to that, in most companies, there's not usually one decision maker. It's like mm. a collaborative effort to make a decision. Exactly. Sometimes the tough decision is a compassionate one. It is because, like, I mean, for example, to have uh, nationalized healthcare is a very difficult decision to make because it costs a lot of money. You know, it puts a lot. It requires a lot of effort from the state and from the people. It really, is. and also, I mean, a lot of people in the U.S. And even in Canada, they talk about like, well, our free healthcare is paid for by our taxes. It's like, yeah, where, where the fuck else would it come from? But yeah. when you when you take a look at like American and Canadian taxes, the average taxes, Americans pay, pay slightly more in tax than Canada does. They just funnel their funds to different places where Canada chooses to do it towards healthcare. They may do it mm -hmm. towards their military. They're just funneling the money to different places, yep. but it's still coming out of your taxes. But then some people in the U.S., I don't know if this is so much Canada, but I've heard people in the U.S., they don't want that because they don't want their tax dollars going to help somebody else, which is yeah. why, <laughs> which is why the country and some of, not all of it, blah, 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 disclaimer, we don't know. That's why it's a shit show. Mm, yes. It's because the dish, the people that can make the decisions and can change things, they're dickheads. And so the ordinary voters are suffering because they've been lied to. Absolutely, because the rich people want to make sure they stay rich and their rich friends yeah. stay rich and they want to be able to get the premium health care and fuck everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Sad state of affairs. <laughs> One morning you awake and immediately feel strange. You get out of bed and realize that you were inside a posh hotel room you've never seen before. There was an attractive redheaded stranger sleeping in the bed alongside you. You frantically get up and rush into the bathroom. You look into the mirror, much to your utter amazement. The image looking back at you is Bruce Springsteen. Somehow, you have magically become Bruce Springsteen. You start talking to yourself, and the voice you hear is Springsteen's voice. 
you quietly sing to yourself and it sounds like Springsteen's singing voice. You walk back into your hotel room and see an acoustic guitar. You attempt to play it, but your musicianship is identical to how it was when you were your previous self. In other words, you have Bruce Springsteen's physical body and vocal cords, but you have your own mind and skills and all of your experiences and memories are unchanged. Your knowledge of Springsteen's lyrics and the details of his personal life are the same as they always have been. You are inside Springsteen, but you are still yourself. Your brain is unchanged. You open the door of the hotel room and see a copy of Los Angeles Times. You flip to the entertainment section and discover that Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band are scheduled to perform a concert that night at the Staples Center. What do you do in the situation? How do you proceed? Did we done this before? Because that sounded oddly familiar. No, I don't think. It, I think it's uh, sounds similar to Back to the Future, where he has to go play in that gig. And he plays Johnny Be Good. <laughs> it does sound like that. So what do you do? How do you proceed? Uh, cancel the gig, take the money, and uh, all of his millions. What I could achieve oh. with that money? Oh. I don't know any Bruce Springsteen no. songs. No. He's significantly older than me, so I'm going to be a bit bummed out, to be honest, that my life has just got 40 years shorter. <laughs> I don't know. How, how old is Bruce Springsteen? He may not be significantly yeah. older, but also with his riches, he would have access to a lot more health care. I'm going to look up Bruce Springsteen and see how old he is. I mean, I, I'm expecting to die young anyway, but... That's we'll see. pleasant. <laughs> it's a fact. <laughs> I'm all right with it. He's 73. Oh, fuck, he is significantly older. 73, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, so it's likely that even with my shorter lifespan, he's going to die before me. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I, is there anyone, aside from, like, the musicianship, because that mm -hmm. would never work for me, is there any artist you know well enough that you would be able to pull off a show? Nah, because, I mean, especially musically, um, and acting, I, I'd be quite wooden. And I'd fail at it. <laughs> well, let's go with music, right? Like, there's no musical artist whose songs you know well enough that you would be able to, to play, get on stage. Not to play a whole set for. I could play like a couple of Offspring songs. I could do some a little bit of Metallica for a few bit bars, but forget the guitar, just the singing. Oh no, I, I can't sing at all. I'm tone deaf. <laughs> oh my god! How do you... Oh my god! Have you, you never heard are me sing? In their body, you have their voice, you have their vocal cords, you have your knowledge of but their I have my, musical. No, but I have, uh, I have my brain, and that's where all of that is stored. Like, so I'll know the words, but I won't be able to sing it. Uh, Why because not? It'll still be flat. Because even it though won't I've got be, vocal... because you have their voice. You uh, in... listen to no. the question, sir. Listen to the question. You started to sing to yourself and it mm. sounded like Bruce Springsteen. Whatever you sing is going to sound like that person. You're so frustrating. Whose <laughs> songs yeah. do you know because... well enough that you can sing it? Uh, no one, I don't think. I don't think I'd. Because the, 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 the voice is kind of a cue to remember the rest of the song. So, you know. Like, but, I your, but as soon as you started singing, as soon as you got out the first couple of words, that's the cue. I don't know. I wouldn't be confident to do that. I'm a bit thick with music. <laughs> it's not the only thing you're thick with. <laughs> <laughs> but good being able to stick in. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just being a bitch. <laughs> well, you can admit it this time. It's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> but also speaking in terms of uh, psychologically as well, like so there's going to be a relationship between your vocal cords and your cardiovascular system and your brain, and your uh, and your ears. So all of that is working in tandem to help you to sing. And then without one of those vital components, you're not going to be able to do it. You would have your brain there, mm. like presumably someone who is a singer has a different lung capacity, and they've been mm. able to train a diaphragm in their lungs to be able to blah, 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 blah. So yeah. you have all of that. The only thing you have of your own is, is, your, is your brain. So yeah. if you had all the lyrics... Uh, but the lyrics, yeah, that's fine. There's the lyrics, but then how your brain interprets sound, that's what's important. That's why I'm tone deaf is because I hear the same things as you, but my brain doesn't process it the same way. But you so, would sing it the way that the artists sing. No, because I can't. If you play a note to me, I won't be able to tell you what note it is. Me either. Yeah, but I won't. I but there was like, organ lessons for five years. I wouldn't know. Yeah. But like, there's there's other things as well where like some things sound the same to me, or like I've got no rhythm in term, like musical rhythm. So none of that will change just because I'm in somebody's body. All of this is in the brain. 
the brain has all of your um like up here is your uh, motor sensory cortex okay and then just for example if one of those synapses uh attaches differently uh to what it should do you can't do that I, your fingers will go like that right that's one synapse will do that it's in the brain man in the fucking brain <laughs> Jane's Addiction. That's my answer. I know enough Jane's Addiction songs that I can pull it off. <laughs> Fuck. I'd go off, right? And I'd, I'd cancel the gig and I'd live it up. I'd respect his body because I don't know if he's going to get it back. And so I would, you know. I would also cancel the gig. But. Exactly. There you go then. Because I don't know any Bruce Springsteen songs. I would just stand up there and be like, oh, tonight's going to be a tribute to Bob Dylan. And then I would start singing Bob Dylan songs. People would know. still love it, though, because it's like, I mean, people are crazy Probably. about Springsteen, aren't they? But I don't know any Bruce Springsteen songs. I know the <laughs> chorus to Born in the USA because I've heard it so much, but that's that's yeah. all I know. Yeah. So you'd, you'd respect the body. You'd go off and have, like, do whatever he would do. Like, yes. you don't want to, he's only 73. You don't want to push it too much. You would announce your retirement at, yeah. the, at the show. Yeah, straight away. I'll give still... you all your money back and, you know, yeah. there's another artist. Come see them instead. They'd be gutted, but... Yeah, but there are other musicians whose discography I know well enough that I'd be able to fake my way through it. Yeah. Not even fake your way through it. If I sounded... If I sounded like Joey Ramone, I could... I but mean, Joey Ramone, talks, I wouldn't be able to do that. But Joey Ramone would still sound flat if he sang flat. So when I sing, it's flat. I can sound like whoever the fuck I want, but, but it it's in the brain. Be. It you would have be. Their... No, no, listen, right? It's not I'm your I'm listening. Vocal. I heard you. I disagree. You're being retarded. I think you can make it work. Because <laughs> the card said, you sound like them. They go by the card, you sound like them. <laughs> but it didn't say you sing like him. It didn't. It, it did. said, if he said you said you that they just don't understand psychology then. Oh, God. It's a fucking... Christ. You quietly, sing to yourself. you quietly sing to yourself, and it sounds like Springsteen's singing voice. Yeah, his voice, not his, like, tone, not his cadence, not his fucking... It's just the sound. Oh, my God. 